fam. Today we are going to go over another lecture from the ITF Plus series, and today we are talking about Module 4, Unit 3, which is Secure Web Browsing. Pretty short chapter, uh, pretty short module, but very important nonetheless, okay? So our goals are to kind of just talk through some of the risks there are with the open internet and why we use the, um, why we encrypt data, why we use HTTPS, all that fun stuff. And then just kind of talk a little bit about firewalls and whatnot. So everywhere you look, there are wireless access points available on wireless networks and whether that's Starbucks, whether that's the library, whether that's the school, no matter where you go, you see wireless. So the problem with wireless is once you're on there, it makes it easy for the bad guys to be able to see what you're doing. OK, or maybe even worse, do something like a man in the middle attack where they you think you're going to your bank website. But then in reality, you're going to their fake website and they're going to steal your information. OK, so in order to combat this, we want to make sure that we are using the most up to date web browser that has the most up to date security protocols. So the key takeaway here is data sent over Wi-Fi networks is not secure. Just always treat it that way. You know, whether you're on a secure website or not, just assume that it's not secure. OK, the assume even if you're at your own house, you might be like my my home network is very secure. You don't know what's lurking outside. So just treat it as being insecure and making sure that you're doing your best to do use secure protocols to keep that information from the bad guys. And what do I mean by that? We want to make sure that our transactions are being protected by SSL or the secure socket layer. OK, so um, furthermore, we want to talk a little bit about what does that look like? What, what does this malware look like? Right. When we say the bad guys and whatnot. Well, downloading bad software, obviously that could cause issues. So the types of malware that would be physically on your device would be things like viruses or worms. Big difference there. Worms can move from, you know, machine to machine. You have Trojan horses. So, you know, you have software that seems too good to be true. It's free. And then all of a sudden it turns out it's you know, a virus of some sort, right? It's just packaged in something pretty. Then you have adware where you go to a website and all of a sudden these ads keep popping up everywhere. Well, your machine is infected and they're basically getting all of that ad revenue or even worse is spyware where it's looking at your information and selling that information. So in order to combat these things, obviously we want to use secure protocols and go to trusted websites so that way we don't download some of these things. But then also make sure that your machine is up to date, your antivirus is up to date. So that way you can have real time protection from these things. OK, so you might be wondering, well, how do I know if I have an infection, right? Because obviously the bad guys are going to do everything they can in order to keep this under wraps because they want this to go as long as possible. Well, if you open up, let's say Google, and all of a sudden it goes to a different website that looks like Google, but something's just a little bit off, chances are they've probably done something to hijack your web browser. So that's kind of a telltale sign. Um, if you try to go to your bank website and all of a sudden something looks different or maybe a pop up shows up, that could be a sign that you might have an infection. And then finally, you might have a thing that says, hey, there's a virus on your computer scanning now. And really, that's just an ad that is trying to get you to download their software. OK, so they might get you with like a browser extension, which then will put this window up and then you download, you know, you think, oh, I got to scan. I got to download this antivirus when in reality that antivirus is that it's that Trojan horse and it's coming in and it's infecting your system in order to steal all of your information. So making sure that you are using a modern web browser and what I mean by modern web browser would be things like Opera, Firefox, um, Edge, uh, Google Chrome, those are all kind of a more modern web browser. If you're on the Mac side, then using Safari is probably your uh, your best bet because it's baked into the operating system and it's getting all of the latest and greatest security updates. OK, so making sure your browser is up to date is your first line of defense. And if you have more than one browser on your computer, make sure that you're updating them 
at all times, okay? So built into the web browser, if you've noticed over the last couple of years, the work that we do is primarily happening on a web browser, okay? That's why things like Chromebooks can exist is because there's so much that is done on the web. Like you right now learning, you're not sitting in a classroom, you're doing this through a web browser, right? You're interacting with this content through a web browser. So in order for that to work, you have different scripts, you have different add-ons, these type of things. You wanna limit the number of things that you enable, especially when it comes to things like um, your extension or you know web apps, stuff like that, that are running in your browser. A, it'll slow down performance, but B, that's just another thing you have to update, okay? So me, I like to keep things very simple um, and only turn on what I absolutely have to okay um and on that last page you'll see flash and silver light those have kind of gone gone the way of the dodo bird they are no longer really um around they're not really supported any longer um another thing that you want to make sure that you do is disable any client side scripting okay so you can go and download plugins that do this for you you can dig into you know your settings and see you don't want stuff processing on your side okay you want this to be um all as much as you can not all but um as much of this happening on the server side. Remember, we have client and server. So client was us on the web browser. Server is the web server that's hosting that. Okay, so on the client side, we don't want a lot of that scripting to happen because that could cause um, issues on our local machine. So um, if you want to pause the video now and do a quick Google search for how to disable this, that would be a good thing or just take a mental note of uh, something that you can look up in the future. Also, like I said, making sure that extensions, plugins, themes, those kind of things. I like to suggest that users keep that to a minimum because again, this is opening up more potential because you're downloading bits of code, right? And if there was an issue in that code, it's going to cause a security issue. So limiting um, the number of plugins and extra things that you use is key, but also making sure that you're using trusted vendors, okay? Because you don't want to download something, then come to find out that it is a virus or some type of malware, okay? Moving on from there, cookies. So cookies have a purpose, okay? They store things like our session information that says when we connected, that we logged in, um, metadata for websites. Um, sometimes there is some PII in it, you know, your first name, last name, those kind of things. Um, and it's important, I think sometimes that cookies kind of get a bad rap, that this is like viruses or people are gonna steal my information. They are just kind of a necessary part of web communication. So clearing these things out from time to time, sure. Um, I know with the um, EU, we, we're a little bit more cookie conscious, if you will. Um, websites have to say you know, exactly what information they're tracking and whatnot. Um, but, you know, ads, they use your browser history or your cookies and stuff. So um, they're kind of a necessary evil, I think. I don't think they're all bad, um, but it is important for you to know, like, what information is this website keeping? Because they're going to save a cookie and then you go to another website and are you now advertising that data out there, right? Uh, so you want to kind of limit that if at all possible. So earlier I said something about, uh, you know, a pop up where you see this antivirus thing. Well, you can see here, this is an example of a pop up. So the screen in the background kind of goes um, dim or faded, and then you'll see a window that shows up. Um, and I believe we talked about this with like UAC prompts and whatnot. Um, so those pop up windows are what we want to keep an eye out um, for things like fake viruses, right? So going on a website and all of a sudden it looks like a Windows app shows up. Really, that's just a well designed web pop up to try to get you to download something, right? That's not an actual application on your computer. Um, so limiting you know pop-ups and stuff like that um, is also best practice as far as keeping your information secure okay um, disabling autofill uh, I'm 50 50 on that so if we're talking you know you're talking to TJ and be like hey what do you think I do the autocomplete stuff because it saves me time and energy the from the exam point of view, they're looking at it from a security point of view that you don't want to store information and like send information um, where it doesn't need to go. So they're saying best practice is to disable some of those things. Uh, I think it's important when it comes to taking these tests. Um, what is important about taking these tests is making sure that you know what the um, 
certification body is asking you. OK, so is this best practice? Sure, did not do this. But then there's the human element of convenience and efficiency. So you just have to be able to balance that. Um, Another thing, too, is incognito. So if you're on your bank and whatnot, um, using incognito so that way nothing gets saved um, on your local computer. OK, then we move on to digital certificates. So what are digital certificates? I like to think of them as um, kind of like a driver's license for the website. So if you look at a certification, uh, it'll tell you or a certificate, it'll tell you who bought the certificate, who's responsible for it. Um, it shows that it's valid. So this is like a taking it a step further as far as making sure that I'm saying who I say that I am. So if you go to my website, uh, tjhouston.com, you can look at that certificate and you could see all of the information and that uses PKI or the public key infrastructure. Um, where we have a public and a private key and we're able to move information over the internet without ever having those keys kind of um, be leaked out into the public realm. Uh, but we could do a whole video on PKI. Um, but just note as far as like secure web browsing that it's a certificate that proves uh, the website is who it says it is. So if you're on a website, you can simply click on the little lock icon. Sometimes it's at the bottom and then you can see the information. So you can see here um, in trust has identify this site as bank of .com. So we know that this is the actual bank of America dot com. OK, that's what ensures that we have this nice little green lock um, to make sure that it's kind of showing you that this is, in fact, a safe website. OK, so if you see something over here like this on the right where it says there's a problem with the certificate, it might have expired or there might not be one. Um, you'll want to get some more information on that before you make any bad decisions. OK. So from there, I'm um, talking a little bit about our um, other ways that we can stay secure um, using firewalls. OK, so there's a couple different types of firewalls. The first one is packet filtering. OK, so we're going to look at the IP address and application and the port number. So if we uh, all of a sudden are getting all these all this traffic going to port 80 and we're not running a web server Well, we're gonna block that traffic, right? So we just go in and say we want to block all traffic to say this port, okay? From there we have stateful inspection, okay? So basically we're looking at the application layer and we're saying okay like this is you know beyond just the port that it's trying to access we actually want to get a little bit of information about this application so that way we know if it's good or bad for our users, okay? And then most of these um, devices, these firewalls, you have it locally built into your computer, um, whether you're on Mac, PC, Linux, any of them, they all have a firewall that you can go in there and explicitly open ports and allow certain things. But then there's also network based firewalls that as you, you know, start into your IT career, you might become responsible for them. And these are um, small appliances and all in appliances is think of it like a one trick pony. So it's it's a server, but it's only really running one thing. Um, and they have their own operating system. Usually um, it's not like you boot up to Windows and you see it. Um, it's a one trick pony that is designed to just do uh, firewalls. OK, so you can see here um, this is a firewall that's in one of those Soho devices that we talked about on the last video where we can go and say like port forwarding. Like if we did want to host a web server at our house, we could go in and forward any of that traffic going to that port over to our machine. So that is more on the network side. This is an example of our Windows firewall. So you can see here, you can actually customize it based on the different networks that you're on. So if you're on a public network versus your home network, this is what I want you to do. Maybe you're locking more things down when you're on a public network. And you can see here, um, what are some of the applications that are allowed through your firewall? Um, what do we want to, you know, our settings as far as when we're connected to a private versus a public. What do we want to do? Do we want to block all incoming connections, um, including those in the allowed applications? Like this is like really turtling up and like jumping in our shell. OK, we have that ability, that finite capability um, with the built in firewalls with, again, any modern operating system is going to have that. OK. 
Um, proxies sometimes are used still. Um, you're actually gonna use proxies more, or at least the setting, uh, more on the ethical hacking side when you're using uh, the burp suite. But uh, proxies are a way that we can send our information through another machine or through a proxy in order to um, keep our identity, I guess, a little bit more secure. Um, but honestly, proxies aren't really used as much anymore because it causes issues when the user goes home. Um, but again, sometimes they are used and basically you have a proxy in which, you know, you can, it used to be, um, you would send all your traffic through a machine and it would like look at it and make sure it's good or bad. Um, but that was easy to kind of get around. So that's why security appliances and filters have kind of gone away from that. Okay. So hopefully this short little video uh, helps you understand some of the ways that you can stay secure while you are using the internet, whether that's a public network or even at home. Okay. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you for watching and have a good day.